Okay, welcome back everyone. It's Dr. Lindner. In this next short uh, video, we're going to be talking about muscle metabolism. Now, how do muscles derive adenosine triphosphate that's needed for energy to make muscles contract? Well, we can get energy through CP, which is creatine phosphate. We can get it from anaerobic glycolysis. Anaerobic meaning it does not need the presence of oxygen. And then we have cellular respiration, which does need the presence of oxygen or aerobic respiration. So let's look at this CP that I was talking about before. What I said earlier was that if we have lots of ATP, the body just doesn't want to have this hanging out in the wind by itself, right? It doesn't like to keep lots of ATP hanging around. So we have creatine that can bump into ATP, and it uses an enzyme called creatine kinase. And what ends up happening is ATP will lose one of those phosphates to now have one less phosphate called ADP, adenosine diphosphate. But the creatine picked up that terminal phosphate, so now we have CP, creatine phosphate. Now, when we do need ATP, creatine phosphate can hook up again with ADP. ADP can take that phosphate group, join that third phosphate or additional phosphate with ADP, adding one phosphate to the diphosphate, giving us ATP. Okay, so this is a way that we can create energy. This is used pretty quickly. The duration of the energy provided lasts for about 15 seconds or so. This is utilized like if you need a quick sprint, if you're a power lifter, that, that one-time lift, we're gonna be using uh, creatine phosphate. That's why um, many people in athletics supplement with creatine, right? It, it allows us to have a little bit more available ATP. Let's look at cellular respiration. This is where oxygen comes into play. Now, notice here, this is a mitochondria, but off to the left, we have glucose. Now, glucose is this six carbon sugar, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is glucose right there. Now, when we take glucose and we break it down, that's called glycolysis or glycolysis. The word lysis means to break down. So what we're doing to this glucose is that we're going to lyse it or we're going to split it right down the center. And when you split it, what you're left with are these two branches, which is two three-carbon sugars, which looks like this, right? We broke this bond here and this bond here, so you're left with two of these three carbon sugars. That's called pyruvic acid. That's all glycolysis is. And this takes place in the cytosol. It's, it's in the cell, but it's in the cytosol. It's not taking place in the mitochondria. Now, if oxygen is available, this pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria. Now, some ATP is produced by this, not much, some, but not a lot. Then in the mitochondria, it goes through the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is where your B vitamins come in, especially B1, B2, and B3. I tell my patients B1, B2, B3 for energy. B1, B2, B3 for energy, right? We don't want to take B vitamins at night. You want to take your B vitamins in the morning, early afternoon, but not at night, okay? And if they're good quality ones, always take them with food on an empty stomach. They'll make you pretty nauseous. <clears throat> B1, 
These are the ones that make the urine pretty fluorescent, uh, primarily because of B2, which is riboflavin. Flavin or flav means yellow, and that's what makes the urine uh, pretty much fluorescent yellow. So B1, B2, B3 for energy. The Krebs cycle is involved in some energy production, but not a lot. Some ATP, not a lot. But the Krebs cycle is giving off CO2, carbon dioxide. And this is why we exhale, right? We breathe in oxygen for the Krebs cycle, and then we blow out carbon dioxide. What the Krebs cycle produces is something that's needed by the electron transport chain. Now, this is the money winner right here. This is what makes lots of ATP is the electron transport chain. What the Krebs cycle produces are coenzymes called FAD and NAD. And these coenzymes come from these vitamins, B2 is going to give us FAD, and B3, niacin, is going to give us NAD. And FAD and NAD are used in the electron transport chain to produce ATP. Now, the electron transport chain is really important. This is why we need iron, and this is why we need something called coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. You've heard of people that are iron deficiency anemia or uh, anemic due to too little iron. They have no energy because they can't produce ATP. People that have CoQ10 issues, again, can always fatigue because they can't produce ATP because the electron transport chain isn't working. So the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain are both taking place in the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle takes place first. You do need B vitamins there so that it can produce these coenzymes, FAD and NAD, and the coenzymes are needed for the electron transport chain to produce energy. But that's why you need your B vitamins, not so much to, for the Krebs cycle to make the energy, but for the Krebs cycle to produce the coenzymes that are needed by the electron transport chain to make ATP. Now I'm going to show you why CoQ10 issues can create a lot of fatigue and a lot of muscle ache issues, a lot of uh, myalgias or fibromyalgias, and create a lot of dementia or cognitive impairment in this video coming up. Hang on tight.